Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work because I have an interesting little math word problem here for you. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. A cell tower can service 75 square miles. How far away from the tower can you be and still connect? All right, so this is the prom, and if you're a little bit confused, I'll clarify uh, the prom in just one second. But first, I want to give you a full opportunity to show off your math skills so you can solve this problem all on your own without any help from me. And if you have the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the solution in just one second, and then, of course, I will explain uh, the solution to this pro uh, problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just like this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so uh, before I show you the answer, uh, let me just kind of emphasize that we need to look at this problem in very simplistic uh, terms. So some of you out there might be um, actual engineers or you know uh, experts in communication, and they're in real life a problem like this is actually pretty sophisticated. It is an engineering problem, so we don't want to kind of overlook into the problem. This is a simple math problem, so we want to keep it very simple and not assume you know, actual real life variables, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. But let's go and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is approximately 4.88 miles. All right, now if you got this answer, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are an expert in figuring out interesting little math word problems. And they may not be that impressed. Uh, you know, they're going to be spending their time watching Netflix while you're watching me getting much, much smarter. But anyways, with all jokes aside, if you got this right, that's fantastic. And if you uh, didn't get this right, uh, don't panic because you know, I'm going to explain the, the solution to this problem right now. All right. So again, we're going to keep things nice and simple. And here again is our problem. But uh, we are dealing with a math word problem here. So I always like to kind of use the rule three which is read a prompt at least three times before you start do, you know, before you start doing anything, right? So you're like, okay, I, I, the worst thing you could do is like, okay, I, got, I read the problem once and now I'm just going to start doing stuff. Now you don't want to do that. What you want to do is assume that you're not going to have all the information in your brain the first time out. So read the problem one time, read it again, start building a picture of what's going on and make sure you understand the question. Now in this particular problem, uh, just understanding the scenario and the problem uh, is could take a little bit of thought, okay, and logic for some of you out there. And a good way to kind of figure out what a problem is uh, saying, if you're confused about it, is try to model the problem. Try to visualize it, okay? So we have this cell tower, right, and it can service 75 square miles, right? And now the question is, how far away can we be and still pick up a signal more or less uh, uh, from the tower. Now I'm kind of paraphrasing, but that's effectively what the problem is saying. So we need to kind of think about this uh, problem visually. So here is my little lovely model of what's going on. So let's say I have a uh, cell tower here, right? Now the tower is sending out some sort of signal. Now, if you think about it, a radio signal or a cell signal, it doesn't make a difference. Does a uh, signals just kind of go out like this in just one direction? Now they can, they can, okay, if you're talking about directed signals, but if you're talking about like a cell tower or a radio station, how do you think the signals are going out? You know, they're probably going out like in a circle, right? They're kind of going out in all directions. So we kind of have to be a little bit logical here, right? So in other words, if you're like, um, in, let's say this far away from the tower, you could still hear or you could still pick up a signal. Well, then if this distance is the same or this distance is the same, well, it doesn't make a difference where you're at necessarily. Now, in real life, yes, it could very, uh, you know, have a lot of bearings to it because there could be all different sorts of variables. It could be mountains and different conditions, but we're not talking about that. We're just talking about this perfect little land. It's nice and flat, just like we have right here, right? So the signals are going out in, in a radial kind of way, okay? So this particular um, 
uh, sketch right here that I'm drawing. Here's my tower. Here's my uh, circle. Now I'm looking at it like in a perspective way, so it looks like an ellipse. So we want a kind of a better um, figure, more accurate mathematical description of what's going on. So let's go ahead and take a look at what really is going on. And what's really going on is it's a uh, circle, okay? So if it's a circle, let's actually think of it in terms of a circle. So here would be like our tower right here, okay? So here's a tower and the signals are going out like this, all right? Now the question is how far away can we be and still pick up this signal? Well, if the the, the, if the tower, okay, excuse me, I'm kind of bumbling over my words, but if the tower can service uh, 75 square miles, you know, basically what we want to interpret that as is that, all right, so uh, all this area, okay, 75 square miles, 75 square miles, miles squared is area, okay? So basically, if you're within this area here, you can pick up a signal from this tower, right? So that's hopefully how you interpret uh, interpreted the question because that is indeed the question. Now, uh, uh, really, well, that is not the actual question, but that is the uh, situation. But the question here is, how far away can you be, okay, and still pick up a signal? Well, if this right here, this circle represents 75 square miles, you could be right here on the edge and still be uh, within that circle that has 75 square miles, okay, of coverage, right? So what we're really looking for is the radius of this circle, okay, this distance right here. Obviously, if you're right here, you're gonna be able to pick up the signal, and if you're right here, you're gonna be able to pick up the signal, and if you're right on the edge of the circle, you'll be able to pick up the signal as well, but if you're outside the, the circle, okay, if you have a further radius away, you're not going to be able to pick it up because this circle here, okay, this larger circle has a, um, uh, an area that's greater than 75 square miles. Okay, so that is effectively the problem. So what we have here, and the only information we have is that the cell tower, okay, has a coverage of 75 square miles. So that's the only kind of number we have to work with. But what we need to do is take this information, the area of this circle, and find the radius. And we can do that because we have a lovely a formula that uh, equates the area and the radius of a circle. So the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. All right, so hopefully you uh, you, rem you remember this uh, particular formula. And there's a lot of formulas, a ton of formulas in, in mathematics and, ge and geometry. And um, you know, you can't memorize all formulas. That's just impossible. But some formulas, things like the Pythagorean theorem, a squared uh, uh, plus b squared is equal to c squared, uh, things like the area of a triangle, uh, area of a circle, these type of things I think should go into your long-term math memory, okay? Things that you could hopefully uh, recall. Now, of course, this is important if you are a student right now, but if you've been away from math forever, well, of course, you, you may have uh, forgotten uh, the area of a circle formula. But this is it. Area is equal to pi r squared, and we know the area, whoops, we know the area of the circle, which of course is 75. So what we want to do is solve for the radius. Okay, so we want to solve for r, but we have r squared in this formula. So now what it comes down to is can you uh, uh, solve this equation? 75 is equal to pi r squared. So that is going to be our next step. So let's go ahead and take it, which of course is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now I wouldn't stop this lovely video if it wasn't that important. And I'm going to just take a fast, brief um, second to tell you why it's important. Because it's important to me, okay, to reach as many people as I possibly can to support them, to motivate them, and, and encourage them to not quit on math, all right? This is what I've uh, chosen to do in my life. I've, well, you know, I've done a lot of different things in my life, but the vast majority of all my education, going to college, master's degree, professional experience, et cetera, et cetera, it has to deal with math education. Mathematics is so important, and it's just even that it's becoming even uh, more important for the future. Okay, if you take a look at all the technology that's out there, but a lot of people unfortunately are not getting the best math education, and I'm trying to do something about it. So by you subscribing, it really does help YouTube. Uh, push out my content more and hopefully it will connect me with those people that I can help. So thank you so much and this is a great way to support my channel. If you're going to do this, go ahead and hit that notification bell as well. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and get back to this problem. Okay, so uh, we have the area of this circle, okay, which of course is the coverage uh, area of this cell phone tower, right? The cell phone tower can uh, cover 75 miles square or 75 square miles. So what we're trying to do is determine what the radius is. And uh, we have this lovely setup here, right? Area is equal to pi r squared, 75 is equal to pi r squared. So let's go ahead and solve for r. Okay, now, uh, first things first, what type of equation are we dealing with here? Okay, well, this variable is squared. This happens to be a quadratic equation. So there's gonna be two solutions. I'll show you the uh, solutions in just one second, but you just wanna be aware of this, uh, that we are dealing with a quadratic equation. All right, now, some of you might be saying, well, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is 75 is equal to pi r squared. Why did you write this here and then put the 75 on the other side? Well, uh, typically when we solve equations, we like to have the variable on the left-hand side. So like 2x is equal to 10. This is equivalent to 10 is equal to 2x. But uh, it's just um, easier okay, for people to solve equations when the variable is on the left-hand side. So 2x is, is equal to 10. We can uh, write this, there's symmetry here, 10 is equal to 2x, so it's no big deal if we could just kind of reverse sides. Now, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to do it here. Okay, so we have pi r squared is equal to 75. I'm going to solve this equation. So first, we're going to isolate the r squared part. Okay, and what we're going to do here is divide both sides of the equation by pi. Okay, so we got 75 divided by pi. Uh, r squared is equal to 75 divided by pi. So now we're going to go ahead and take the next step and deal with this. All right, so we're dealing with pi uh, in our uh, formula and in our equation right here. So what is pi? Well, pi is probably one of the, if not the most important numbers in all of mathematics, and that is not uh, you know, an exaggeration. But uh, we need some sort of decimal equivalent for pi. The bare minimum that I would suggest you ever use is 3.14. Now, this decimal can go on and on. It's an irrational number. It's a non-terminating, non-repeating fraction. So if you want an estimate for pi, I would say at a very minimum, use 3.14. Now, you could use more decimals, of course. right? You could pull that up in your calculator. And the more decimal place values that you use for pi, the more accurate your answer is going to be. Okay, so at a very minimum, we're going to use 3.14. So if your answer is a little bit different than what I showed you in the beginning of this video, well, you may, uh, you may have used a better estimate of pi. Okay, so I'm going to use 3.14 just to keep things nice and simple. So r squared is going to be equal to uh, 75 divided by pi. Pi here, again, is going to be 3.14 for the, uh, the purposes of this video. So let's divide 75 divided by, let's take 75 and divide it by 3.14, and you're going to get approximately 23.88, and I'm going to be rounding here as well. Okay, so r squared is going to be approximately 23.88. So how do I solve for r? Well, to solve for r, this basic quadratic equation, we're going to take the square root of both sides. So remember, uh, when you have a variable squared like r squared, you will have two solutions, okay? That is by uh, definition a quadratic equation. So R is equal to, uh, well, that's not the definition of a quadratic equation, but all quadratic equations have two solutions, okay? So that, I want to be kind of clear there. So R is going to be approximately equal to um, positive negative square root of 23.88. And so when you go into your calculator to the square root of this number, you're going to get 4.88, but to be technical about it, we have both a positive and negative root or solution. So we're gonna throw out the negative because uh, we're not dealing with a negative uh, radius. We're talking about the distance away from the tower. So we're gonna keep the positive uh, 4.88, and of course that's the radius. And we are talking about uh, 75 square miles. So the radius will be in uh, miles. All right, so that's how I come up with 4.88 miles. All right, so hopefully, you know, this uh, makes sense to you now. And some of you could have been confused by the problem and the setup, and that's perfectly okay. But um, one thing that I wanna um, uh, mention to you is that if you've uh, ever, if you ever wanted to take a physics class, okay? Physics is one of my most uh, favorite subjects. I love physics and engineering, did a lot of it in a formal life. But the language of all that is mathematics, okay? So if you don't know math, you can't study science and engineering and things like that. Now, if some of you are still in school 
and you are studying geometry or algebra 2 pre-calculus I'm gonna leave links to all those courses uh, in the description but if some of you want to kind of refresh your math skills or maybe uh, just kind of take another journey through uh, the world of mathematics I just came out with a new course that's called my math skills rebuilder course um, I'm very proud of that course because it's custom made for those of you out there that might be interested in relearning math okay or maybe learning math better than you did the first time and in that course you'll find you'll have basic mathematics all arithmetic and then I teach you a ton of algebra ton of geometry some basic trigonometry and even some probability and statistics it's a self-paced course and anyways it's a new course of mine and I want to uh, offer it to those of you that might be interested in really kind of getting uh, back into mathematics okay so with all that being said I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures thank you for your time and have a great day